The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion had a very unique and appreciated feature of the game that allowed the player to fast travel to all nine of its major cities without even needing to have discovered them. This made for an easier time when having to adventure off to various forts, ruins, caves, and villages located around Cyrodiil. With the main quest line starting off, Kavach, one of the major cities, is sacked and destroyed and we never get to see it in a restored working order. One wonders what NPCs, shops, guild factions, and quest lines would have been found in a pre-Oblivion Crisis version of the city. However, better to have the ruins of a major city in the game than not at all. Or, should we say, than barely at all. If 9 major cities feels like a weird number, and you're wondering why not 10, well, that's because there actually was supposed to be 10 major cities. This is the lore, facts, and brief history on Oblivion's lost in 10th city named Such. Players were able to piece together through evidence within the game as well as documents and data forgotten by the developers that Such was supposed to be an additional city to adventure around in. Such would have been located north of Anvil and northeast of Kavach. Likely for timing and having an overburdened workload, the city of Such was ultimately left out of the final game. Based off of pure speculation, perhaps Such also had the least amount of content and quest lines surrounding it, and that's why they had to triage it. One of the more concrete clues that the city was supposed to exist is that during the map scrolling feature in the background of the title screen, Such can clearly be seen as a decently sized city with details to its layout. Above it, you can see the words County Such, which implies that the land it governs and has jurisdiction over was to the northeast. This would have made sense given Coral is far to the northeast of Such, and there's no major city bordering Hammerfell. There's simply too much unoccupied land on the western side of Cyrodiil, and politically, a city on or near the border would be to Cyrodiil's advantage. Such would have been accessible via the Gold Road that would have run north from Anvil, which ultimately led to Brenna River. By looking at the title screen map again, we see connected to Such is a moderately sized lake. There appears to be an inlet on the south side of it and one wonders if there would have been any quests or unique scenarios that would have involved it. Another developer mishap and proof of the 10th major city is Such was actually available for showcase in Oblivion's E3 demo of 2005. While watching Todd Howard narrate and explain the happenings of the game, he fast travels to Kavach and we can clear as day see the city of Such northeast to it on the map. Unfortunately, as he doesn't fast travel to anywhere near Such, we don't get a visual of its aesthetics or layout. When watching the demo back, Todd Howard says something quite peculiar. He mentions that there are 9 main cities and dozens of smaller settlements. If such were to be included in the game, that would have made for 10 major cities. So, were the plans to remove such already in motion before the E3 demo was even released? Or was such considered a smaller settlement? Now let's discuss in-game references to the city of such throughout the entire Elder Scrolls series. These references are compiled from the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages and can easily be accessed for more information. The first one is actually a map of Western Tamriel, which shows the edge of Cyrodiil. The city of Such can clearly be seen written out where it was supposed to be located in Oblivion. This map is a compilation of various smaller maps, loading screens, and box artwork from the Elder Scrolls Red Guard. The next reference is when reading a biographical book called Joran the Scald King in the Elder Scrolls Online, it lists several major cities across Tamriel that the High King stayed in during his youth, and one of them is that of Cyrodiil Such. The next reference is that when reading yet another book in the Elder Scrolls Online, titled Field Guide to River Trolls, the author details seeing a carcass of a river troll in the city of Such's marketplace. The author also details that a hunter likely killed the troll by Brenna River, which corroborates Such's location on the map. The next reference is quite intriguing as it brings up a point of debate or just mistakes within the game's lore. In Oblivion, Skyrim, and ESO, there's a book titled Thief of Virtue. This book mentions a baron who lives in the city of Such, but more importantly, it states that this city is located in the province of Hammerfell. Now, there could be three possible explanations. Number one is that this was a mistake by the developers and the such in question was supposed to be from Cyrodiil. Number two is that maybe there is a second city in Tamriel called Such that is also located in Hammerfell. Or number three, at some point in the history of the Elder Scrolls, 
Disputes and wars over land occurred, which resulted in a Hammerfeld occupied such being taken over by Cyrodiil's armies. The next reference comes from yet another book from the Elder Scrolls Online titled The Rite of Bathia's Gauntlets. It's not about what's in the context of the book, but more so who wrote it. The author is Thendarmor Death Blossom, Bathia's Conduit of Such. Bathia is the Dajic Prince of Cruelty and Torture, so whoever Thendarmor Death Blossom was, was likely a servant operating out of such. The second last reference, and as you could probably guess it, is from another book from The Elder Scrolls Online, which is titled Thibault's Cairn and its History. Similar to the last entry, it's about who wrote the book and not what the book is about. The author's name is Charonius of Such. The historian was more than likely, as the title suggests, born and raised in the Cyrodiil city of Such. The final reference is while looking through Varen's wall in ESO, the player can spot two towers belonging to the county of Such. However, it looks like the city is already in ruins or deconstructed by that time period. Now, you might be asking yourself, wait, is this lost city of Such related to Fort Such? And the answer is yes. All that remains of such in the main game is the fort that's located north of Anvil and northwest of Kavach, exactly where the city was supposed to be. It's in the Gold Coast region of Cyrodiil and near the Colovian Highlands on the border of Hammerfell. Fort Such serves for two quests in the game. One is outside the ruins and one is inside the ruins. Attack on Fort Such is a quest triggered by completing the Dagon Shrine tasks. You'll stumble across a group of Imperial Guards who ask for your help in closing an Oblivion Gate. It's the fairly standard dungeon crawl of defeating Daedra and finding your way through the hellscape to retrieve the Sigil Stone. The other quest that actually takes place inside the fort is part of the Dark Brotherhood questline. In Bad Medicine, you're sent to Fort Such in order to kill a sickly warlord named Roderick. Either by poison or by your own hands, you slip in the castle to commit the deed and then slip out while trying to remain undetected by the 11 other residents. Before accepting the quest, Roderick and four other named mercenaries don't exist at this fort, and its only occupants are six nameless bandits. This is important to note as that means it's no longer under any protection, rule, or care by Cyrodiil's governments and surrounding counties. Another noteworthy piece of information that comes from the Bad Medicine quest is that when receiving advice from Teynava about the task at hand, he'll mention that there's a separate building you can enter to get into the fort. This separate ruin in question is through something called the Fort Such Abbey. He also says that it's quite a distance away from the fort itself, but they're actually connected via tunnels. This indicates two things. One is that there used to be an abbey at the fort, which is a place of prayer and residence for religious figures, which you don't really see a building of such significance around other plain and vanilla forts in Cyrodiil. The second indication is that Teynava mentions the two ruins are far away from each other, yet still connected with tunnels. This means that they were likely a part of a greater town, village, or city long ago when it was at its full capacity and strength. The interior layout of Fort Such is quite minuscule. Including the tunnels the player can enter from, there are four areas that are divided by gates and doors. The main zone is quite spacious and leads directly to where the player will find Roderick if partaking in the Bad Medicine quest. It's difficult to speculate on what the fort could have been used for in a complete city, as we don't really get a perspective of this layout from the other nine major ones. Its design can likely be chalked up to developers' convenience in that they needed to create a dungeon-like setting and didn't leave any breadcrumbs as to what it would have been actually used as. Part of the city's history is that it was an established trade center, likely between Hammerfell and Cyrodiil, so maybe the fort is what's left of an abandoned trading post and that's why there's a large open space in its depths to store food and goods. Another idea could be guards barracks judging by its exterior structure and interior layout. Soldiers could be posted on the walls and perimeter and then use the massive space below for training, resting, and eating. Either way, it's a hard call as to what the fort's purpose would have been within the city and its limits. When the player appears at the land on which Fort Such is built, it's noticeable that there's a large flattened perimeter, which is odd for the landscape of the Gold Coast. This looks like the geographical spot where the city once stood. There's some brief history points outlined in the unofficial Elder Scrolls wiki. From the first era to the third era, Such was used as a trade center and cultural hub, attracting artists, artisans, and performers. It also brought in visitors looking for philosophical pursuits. As we learn from the book, Thief of Virtue, there was a wealthy baron who once lived in Such named Ignis, along with his baroness, Veronique. 
The Baron was likely the overseer of such as lands instead of a count, as it states his castle walls were tall and unscalable. Discussed prior as well, Joran the Scald King visited the city in his youth around year 546 of the Second Era, shortly before the visit of Phrastus of Elenir during the events of ESO, who found the river troll's body in the such markets. During the Tiber Septim conquest of the Second Era, such was an active city in the warring efforts, however, didn't fall under the Gold Coast's borders and jurisdictions, therefore the residents could go about daily life and accepting trade goods from the Brenna River hunters. It's noted that such had to deal with lots of Daedric attacks and summonings, as the Bathiath Conduit operated out of such. The city held strong even after the Hammerfell Civil Wars and the Tiber Septum Conquest. Such was united under one banner with its fellow Colovina state cities during the reign of Emperor Colocane. When Tiber Septum was issued in, starting the Third Empire, all of the cities in Cyrodiil, including Such, swore fealty to him. The last known historical date of Such still being a city was in 864 of the Second Era. Now the final part we can discuss for this video is speculation on what would have been included within Such's city walls. For starters, there would have been a Castle Such, as there is within every major city. Whether the patron of the county would have been called Count or Baron is unknown, however it's more than likely the former. There would likely be an inn, a general merchandise shop, a spell shop, and a blacksmith selling weapons and armor. Given its proximity to Hammerfell, there could be a high population of Red Guards in the city. There would also be a chapel, which would have been the worship space of Kinnerith, as that is the only deity without a designated chapel. There likely would have been both mages and fighters guild halls in the city, as there are hubs in every city excluding Kavach. It's unlikely that there would have been a Dark Brotherhood sanctuary that the player could be based out of, however, Lucine Lachance mentions that there are sanctuaries all over Cyrodiil, so perhaps in the canon lore, one could have existed in the city. There also might have been contracts that would have taken place within or around the city limits. Given its proximity to that of Anvil and Kavach, the architecture could have been similar to what we see in those cities. Albeit, we don't see too much from Kavach. There could have been a heavy influence from Redguard building styles, which includes stonework with detailed tiling, perhaps in a red-orange fashion like Anvil's roofs. The final piece of speculation, perhaps something minuscule in between the lines, would be the city guard uniforms. They could go the way of a white uniform with an emblem on them like Kavach, Leowin, and Breville guards, or perhaps an emphasis on an overall green uniform as that is the one main color we don't see the guards of the other major cities sporting. There could be more bits and bytes of information out there with the regard of cutting Such from the final release of Oblivion. The unfortunate truth is that Such was likely removed due to time constraints and being overburdened while creating this game, but specifically this city because there must have not been as many quests, happenings, and eventful moments to keep it in the game above the other cities. If Bethesda had to put one city on the chopping block, might as well make it the least important and most stale of the major cities. Mods have been created to try and tell a better story of Cyrodiil's lost city, but at the end of the day after 17 years, the fanbase is left to only speculate what happened to such and if we'll ever get a chance to adventure around Cyrodiil's 10th major city.